If you have seen my previous video on how to build a home lab, you might have noticed that I mentioned about properly configuring your virtual machine when you are testing your tools or executing malware. What I did not talk about exactly is how do we configure our virtual machines properly so when we do test our tools or execute malware, we can do it in a safe manner. Which is why in this video, I'm gonna go over how exactly can we configure our virtual machines for both VMware and VirtualBox. When it comes to virtual machines, typically, typically, default settings are okay. But there is always a possibility of infecting our host machine whenever we analyze malware using default settings. So how do we reduce the risk of compromising our host machine when we're analyzing malware in our virtual machine? There are multiple options to do this. However, they all stem from one thing and that is networking. Enough of me talking, let's start with VirtualBox. When we open up VirtualBox and select any of our virtual machines, we have the option to select settings. Once we click on settings, you want to click on network. And now you have a drop down option in which you can click and then you'll be presented with a bunch of different network options. I'll quickly explain the different types of network options that exist in VirtualBox. And for this example, let's just say our host machine has the network IP of 192.168.10.11. We'll start with the default option, which is NAT. This creates a separate network using the host network adapter and will assign it to each virtual machine. In other words, if we have three virtual machines, they will have three different networks. These virtual machines will have access to the internet. The next one is NAT network. Similar to NAT, but instead of having three separate networks, the virtual machines will all mesh into one nice network. These virtual machines will also have access to the internet. Next is bridged. This will make your virtual machines act as physical machines, meaning it'll be on the same network as your host machine. Please don't execute malware using bridge mode, or you can if you like to live life dangerously, but I don't recommend it. These virtual machines will have access to the internet and can access your LAN. Host only network. These virtual machines are only accessible to the host machine. These virtual machines will not have access to the internet, nor will it have access to your LAN. Next is internal network. This is typically the option I use when I am performing malware analysis, as this option puts the virtual machines into their own network. In other words, you will have to statically assign each and every one of the virtual machines an IP. These virtual machines will not have access to the internet and it cannot access your LAN. Next is not attached. Well, your network adapter is not attached. I personally have not used both generic or cloud, so I cannot speak too much about it. However, if you did want to learn more about these network options, I'll leave a link down below for you to read. Now that we have a better understanding of the different network options that are available in VirtualBox, we can start configuring our virtual machines properly. I'll present you with two example scenarios and depending on what scenario fits you best, you can configure your virtual machines accordingly. Scenario number one, you only want to test tools and you require internet connectivity. If that is your scenario, default settings is perfectly fine. And when your virtual machine is using default settings, just remember that the network option is NAT, meaning you will have internet connectivity. So those that are just starting out building their lab, NAT should suffice. Scenario two, you want to analyze malware and identify additional indicators of compromise. For this scenario, I would highly recommend your virtual machine not have any internet connectivity, instead be in its own network, or even better, not even attaching a network adapter to it simply by hitting not attached. Now I am aware that some malware requires internet connectivity. However, that's another video down the line. For this example, the option that we want to select is internal network, as this will allow the VMs, if you have multiple VMs, to communicate with one another and not communicate with your host. And again, you can select not attached if you're extremely paranoid, but I do like having the ability for other virtual machines to talk to one another. That way, when I perform malware analysis, I can create what is called a fake internet. For scenario one, we don't have to make any changes because by default, our virtual machine is set to NAT. If we click on settings and head over to network, as you can see, it is set to NAT. 
We simply need to only power on our virtual machine, download our tools that we want to test, take a snapshot, and off we go. For scenario two, we do need to perform a bit of configurations to stay safe. First, we'll need to change our network to internal network and create a name for that network. So we can go ahead and click on settings, click on network. For the drop down, you want to click on internal network. You want to provide a name for your network. In my case, I will say my test. Hit OK. On your Kali machine, you want to also change your network to internal network and make sure it is using the test network. So we'll go over to Kali, click on settings, go into network, internal network. For your drop down, you want to make sure you select my test or whatever name that you provided. Hit OK. And in theory, our two machines are now in the same network, but we do need to statically assign the IP address on both the Windows machine and Kali. That way they can start talking to each other. We head over to our Windows machine and statically assign our IPs. At the bottom right hand corner, you want to right click this globe icon and select open network and internet settings. Depending on what operating system your virtual machine has, this may look different. However, in this case, we want to scroll down until we find change adapter options. Click on that. Now you want to right click your ethernet and click on properties. You want to look for internet protocol version four. Select that, click on properties. By default, it will be set as DHCP, however, we want to use the following IP addresses. So we click on that. And as for the IP address, I am going to be using 192.168.20.10, for example. And this is where your network fundamentals come in. For the subnet mask, I'll leave it as a slash 24. We could tighten it up more if we want, but it is a lab environment, so we'll be okay. I'm going to leave my default gateway as is and DNS blank for the time being. I'll go ahead and hit OK. Close this window. If we open up command prompt, we can do that by clicking on the start menu, type in CMD, hit enter, type in IP config. We should see our new IP of 192.168.20.10 and it's right there. Perfect. Now that we have successfully assigned a static IP to our Windows machine, we can head over to our Kali machine and do the same. On our Kali machine, we want to right click the ethernet icon located at the top right corner. Right here, we want to select edit connections. Under wired connection, you want to select the gear icon at the bottom. From here, we want to select IPv4 settings. By default, it is set to automatic DHCP. We click on that. We want to click on manual so we can set it as a static IP. Besides addresses, we want to click on add. We want to enter in our address. We are going to be using 192.168.20.11. We'll leave the net mask as 24 and the gateway blank. For the DNS server and search domains, we'll just leave it as is. I'll hit save. I'll close out this window, right click anywhere on the screen and click on open terminal here. We will run a IF config just to confirm that our IP address is indeed 192.168.20.11. Perfect. Let's see if we have connectivity between the two PCs. We can start by pinging our window machine on Kali. So the window machine, I believe was 20.10. This won't work because our trusty windows firewall is actually blocking inbound ICMP traffic. Rather than us creating a rule on windows firewall to enable ICMP, we can simply head over to the windows machine and try pinging the Kali machine. I'm on my windows machine here and I will ping the Kali machine, which was 168.20.11, I believe. Perfect. We see connectivity. 
take a snapshot for both machines and now you'll be ready to start playing around. You just learned how to properly configure your virtual machine on VirtualBox to stay safe. Let's take a look at VMware and see how we can do the same there. Open up VMware and make sure that your virtual machine is selected. Once it is selected, at the top, you can click on VM. And at the bottom, select settings. From here, you will be presented with your settings. You can click on network adapter and you'll be presented with similar options that you've seen in VirtualBox. You got your bridged, your NAT, host only, custom and LAN segment. The main difference between VirtualBox and VMware is that for VirtualBox, you have what is called internal network. Whereas in VMware, you have what is called LAN segment. To create a new LAN segment, we want to click on this button that's called LAN segment. We want to click on add. We can name our LAN segment to whatever we want. So in this case, I will say test, click on OK. We'll select LAN segment. On the drop down, we'll select test, hit OK. The next step is we need to statically assign the machines to the same network and we should be good to go. There are many use cases out there that a virtual machine's network settings need to be configured. However, most of the time, the default NAT setting should suffice. So to summarize, use NAT network if you're simply using virtual machines to test tools and require internet connectivity. Use bridged if you want to live life dangerously. Use host only internal slash LAN segment or not attached if you are paranoid to analyze malware or tools that will not require internet connectivity. This video is part two of three. So yes, there will be another video about labs in the near future. That is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new today. Stay curious and do things differently.